What is up, Cowboys Nation? Your boy Mike Tag here in the Cowboys Cave. Hopefully you guys are having a good morning. If you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe. Make sure you hit that like. Make sure you hit that alert button. That way you can keep track with everything that's going on in the cave. We've got a lot of live shows, player interviews, all that kind of stuff. Might have to get these interviews started sooner than later because usually I wait to the offseason, but I think the offseason might be started already for these Cowboys. Heading out to Washington. First of all, Saturday, McCain's the U. We're going to handle that business, get back on track. But then Sunday, we got Washington. One o'clock game for your boy on the East Coast. That's the life of the Cowboys this year, man. We're stuck with the early games now because no one wants to no one wants to watch us because we're almost unwatchable. But honestly, what I do want to see, and I know this is something that some people are saying, hey, don't play none of them. I do want to see some of these guys coming back. I want to see Bland. I want to see Neal. And I want to see Cooks. I want to see eventually if Tank comes back because these are the weeks that the, the, the Tank is going to take care of itself. You got Cooper Rush at quarterback. It's going to be very hard to win some games with him at quarterback. Let's just be honest. Uh, the only chance they may have is they got a big, big matchup on Thanksgiving going against DeVito. So that'll be perfect timing after your Thanksgiving dinner. You can get some nice rest during that game because it will put you to sleep if you're going to have a hard time sleeping after Thanksgiving. But usually that turkey will get you right. But I want to see who's in, who's out. Who are the guys that are competing and who are the ones we need to move from? Because it's like I said on the show on, on, uh, on Wednesday, there is a poison within this team. There's a culture issue within this team. And whoever comes in next is going to need to clean it out. This team needs a good cleansing. And there's going to be tough decisions that should be made. We don't know if Jerry's going to allow that new coach when they come in to make those decisions. He hasn't done it in a very long time since Bill Parcells, but I was at the game last week. It was very clear. It was a road game, a lot of empty seats. So, you know, the message is being sent by the fans that they're just not tolerating. I, You know, for me, I was planning on going to Thanksgiving. I'm not going. I was planning on going to the Bengals game. I'm not going. I'm selling my seats. Now, unfortunately, I'm going to be selling them to probably more than likely a uh, the opposing team, but it's business. Jerry's worried about business, so I'm worried about business. The only problem is the business ain't looking good for season ticket holders because the ticket prices keep dropping and dropping, and that's just the way it goes. I mean, you make out when it's good, you lose when it when you know when they're not very good. But I just want to say, you know, this team obviously has been major disappointment. Uh, it's probably the most frustrating season as a Cowboys fan, and I, you know, I consider myself a pretty big Cowboys fan, uh, just like most all you guys, and I can't remember a, a season of more disappointment, because when the you know, when we lost uh, the, the year that, you know, that Romo got hurt, or Dak got hurt, I mean, you kind of understood, but the team fought, the team, you know, at, at least they were competitive, I mean, the Cowboys this year, they're not even competitive, that's where I'm saying is, I want to see who's in and who's out, on this team and the ones that aren't competing the ones that are not giving it all they need to hit the road because they have to change this culture they've got to flip it and it can be done very fast i mean you look at what the broncos have been able to do the broncos lost all their draft picks with russell wilson they were in cap hell they turned it around in 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 you know in two seasons they've been able to flip this thing around really quickly and, and uh, they're probably going to be making the playoffs. Now, they're not a Super Bowl team yet, but they'll make the playoffs. The Cowboys have a lot of talent on this team. What they don't have is, is direction and accountability. And I don't necessarily blame McCarthy. I know he will get a lot of the blame, and I've said this over and over. There's just a culture issue that starts at the top. There's a lot of things going on on that team that the, the uh, coach really has no control over because the general manager and owner is kind of the, you know, the, the last word in it. So there's a lot of things going on that need to change. Now, will they change? You know, when they hit rock bottom a few decades ago with, with you know, with the 5-11 and 11 seasons, he went in and brought in a Bill Parcells, heavy hand, dominant, bringing his guys. So it can happen. Now, will that sustain? I don't know. I was one who was against a, a, a Bill Belichick, but I'm not so much against it anymore. Uh, you know, maybe he's what the doctor ordered because the team is talented, but the team has no accountability. There's no fear factor. There's no, 
you know, let's talk about football. Let's focus on football. I think Belichick can give that. And I don't know if Jerry Jones would give him, if he's ready to relinquish that control like he did with Parcells yet. But I think he's getting close. You hear him on his interviews. He's stumbling. He's mumbling. He's trying to make up excuses. You can just tell that he ain't too happy. And he's starting to feel a lot of the heat that Cowboys Nation, the media, everyone else has put on him. Um, but again, you know, it, it, it remains to be seen, but it can get turned around. They're going to have a high draft pick. They need to just, they're going to need to hit home runs on their draft early, get some good, get, get the players that they need, but they're going to have to be active in free agency. That's the tricky part. That's the part where we don't know if Jerry's going, you know, spend that money. They got a lot of cap money. They're going to have a lot of cap money going into that year. You're probably going to have, you know, Zach Martin retire. You don't know the future of Tank Lawrence. They do have some decisions to be made with like a Bland and, and, and Parsons that are going to be coming up soon for, for contract extensions. So they're going to have to figure it out. But what I said, if you guys missed it, is whatever coach comes in, they need to send a message. And a message can be sent very easily by trading or cutting one of your big, big names. And I don't know which one it will be. I don't know if they'll do it, but there needs to be a message sent down because it, it filters down to within the roster that there's no accountability and everyone can kind of do what they want. They can show up to meetings late. They can, you know, show up to games, you know, whenever they want, play how they want, or, you know, whatever the, whatever the case may be, there needs to be a no nonsense. This is about football and nobody's job is safe. You know, comfortably uncomfortable is what Parcells and Jimmy Johnson and Belichick and all these kind of coaches you know, that was the mentality, and they brought it down to the players. You need to be on the edge all the time, and you can change the culture of this team. You look at what a Dan Campbell, you know, he was a Parcells guy. He was he was one of those Parcells guys that kind of went through all the different teams, you know, and followed Bill wherever his, his pit stops were. That's the kind of culture that they need to create, and you can do it. A Dan Campbell did it. You see what's going on in Washington. As much as I don't like the, the Washington as much as I think they're overrated, and we'll find out how great they are uh, against a depleted Cowboys team, see how they do. Um, they've changed the culture. They are moving in the right direction. They got the new ownership. They got the new general manager. They bring in a new coach. They bring in a, a young quarterback. They changed the culture of that, of that team of being perennial losers and perennial just a laughing stock to actually being respected. And, and you know, more than likely, the way their schedules played out, they'll probably, you know, make the playoffs. Won't do much in it, but hey, you get to the tournament, you never know what'll happen. All you want is an opportunity to get in the playoffs. And that was a disappointing, you know, part of this season for the Cowboys is because I think a lot of fans were on edge. A lot of fans were unsure how this team's going to be. But I think we all kind of said, you know what? They got the best quarterback in, in the division. One of the best ones in the conference. Didn't play like that this year, let's just be honest. But That'll carry you a long way. I mean, it's a quarterback-driven league. We felt the defense had some holes, but you just kind of hoped that maybe they they struck some on some draft picks. They bring in you know a couple you know bargain basement free agents. Maybe that'll be good enough to hold it down. Well, it proved to be not happening. Um, you need to have, and I've talked about it. You need to bring in veteran free agents, not only you know for for their experience and and leadership. But you want people in there with a championship mentality, some dogs, some people are hungry. And it doesn't have to be, like I said, the, the big high price free agents. It needs to be those blue collar guys, you know, that mid-tier, solid, you know, the Robert Joneses of the world. If you guys remember the Cowboys of the 90s, the Darren Smiths, the Tony Tolberts, the Russell Marylands, Tony Casillas, the Chad Hennings. You need that on your team. We really don't. It seems like we got, you know, the superstars. And then we've got a big drop off. We don't have that meat in the middle. And that's what the Cowboys need, that tough mentality. Because you can see it. When they play a team that has it, you can see it from the start of the game all the way to the finish. And that's why they, you know, people label the Cowboys soft. They just don't really have that tough mentality. I'm not saying they're soft, but I'm saying that's where they get that stigma and that and that label. So I know people wanna wanna lose every game. I want to win this Sunday. Let's just be honest. I'll be honest. If we win one game this year, this is the game that I want to win. I, I just do. I don't like losing to rivals. I think the losing and the tanking will take care of itself. You see Cleveland beat Pittsburgh last night. You're going to have some of these teams, 
that 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 are you know ahead of us in the draft they're going to lose and we're going to lose too but they're going to win too right they're going to lose and they're going to win they're going to they're going to pull out some game it's the nfl i mean it's a it's parity is there that's why you see some of these bad teams you know quote unquote beat some of these playoff teams because it is the margin of error you don't know how things are going to play out so i want to play this season out the record will be what it'll be um, but I want to see what players have the heart, what players are going to fight. And those are the ones I want to, I want to bring in because they're auditioning. They're auditioning for their job. They're auditioning for the coach next year. Um, because I, I, I guarantee you, if you get a Belichick, you get a Vrabel, you get, I know primetime's names popped out. That's pretty much off the table now. They just got one of the top, uh, recruits, uh, at quarterback. So Dion's not going anywhere. And I, I think Shador needs to separate himself from his dad anyway. He needs to build his own legacy. And I think Dion needs to build his own legacy as a head coach. I think, you know, you don't need to be tied to the hip to your to your son or your father. Because uh, you're always, you know, for Shador, he's always going to be living in his dad's shadow. He's never going to be what his dad was. His dad was one of the greatest NFL football players of all time. You know, easily the greatest cornerback of all time. So... He needs to create his own. He doesn't need that pressure of every day with his dad. And I think Dion, the question always is, can he win without his son? He's always had his son, you know, all the way up through the through the ranks. So how can Dion do, you know, without a son at quarterback? So I think they both have something to prove. And I think Dion is the perfect college coach because he can mentor these young men. I don't see him interacting with the NFL players. I just don't see it. It's big business. It's big money. And, you know, Dion's all about the money and the glam, but he has a standard of excellence that he expects. And I think from a professional athlete, I think college, their kids, he can mentor them. He can let some stuff slide. But if he's not happy with one of his college kids, he just go let them go and go get another one in the transfer portal or you recruit because you turn over your roster so much. The NFL, your roster changes 25%, but you are going to be stuck with high price salary cap guys you just can't go cut a Dak Prescott a CD Lamb when you come in next year just because you want to because the cap will not allow it so that's why I think Dion is best where he's at will he stay at Colorado could he go to Florida State could he go to a a bigger power five school Um, I mean that remains to be seen but I think he's going to be in Colorado for a little while it seems like they love him there he loves it there it's a great fit the conference they're in is not you know, it's not a uh, murder's row of teams. So I think success for him building up. I think he's got a great opportunity with the playoff set system set up. I think he's got some opportunities to get in the tournament. And that's all, again, that's all you ask for. All you ask for is that opportunity in the tournament. So I don't think Dion's an option. But whatever coach comes in here needs to put his stamp on the team. And Jerry needs to allow it. He hasn't done that again since Parcells. McCarthy, they gave him his offensive coordinator. Uh you know, Jason Garrett, he was handpicked before they even had Wade Phillips as the offensive coordinator. It was kind of like Jerry's guy. They need to go a total 180. Ben Johnson is the name that I think everyone would do backflips for. I don't know if Jerry, I don't know, I don't know if he would want to come here, and I don't know if Jerry's going to pay him what what he needs here. But I would love a young coach to come in here as long as they give him the authority. If not. I was totally against Belichick, but it's starting to grow on me as I see and as I hear the way this team is within the locker room, seeing the way this team is on the field. That's what makes it a little bit, you know, I think they need a good kick in the ass. And and if Belichick comes in, he's got all the rings. You know, Jerry can say he's got three rings as the owner, but Belichick has got six, eight rings. So... He's got a lot of hardware that he can uh, that he can bring up. So anyway, those are my thoughts. We'll be doing our live show Sunday morning. Kind of get you ready for the game. It's a one o'clock game, so on the East Coast, twelve o'clock Texas time. So the good thing is it's going to be over. You're going to be able to enjoy the rest of your afternoon. It's supposed to be beautiful. I'm in Florida and it's cold outside. I actually had to wear a long sleeve shirt. So the weather is supposed to be perfect, and I'm sure it's going to be that way in a lot of parts of the country. So enjoy it. The year is almost over. The season, unfortunately, we got eight more weeks. Uh, so we got a long way to go. But it's now when it hits that Thanksgiving time, Christmas is right around the corner. We can all do our New Year's resolutions. We all kind of get a fresh start. And hopefully these Cowboys get their shit together by next year and get this thing turned around. Because, I mean, we've been 
We haven't been spoiled by championships, but we've been spoiled by a consistent team. This team has only had three losing seasons in 20 years, but they got zero championships to show for it. And I talked about it on Wednesday. There's only two other teams that have that unfortunate tag of being a top 10 team over the last 20 years with zero championships. That's us, the Dolphins and Vikings. And that's kind of embarrassing. So they need to change it. We need to get this thing going. We need to find a new way to break the curse because we brought Jimmy Johnson. We put him in the ring of honor. We had not won a damn game since he's been in the ring of honor. So there's got to be a new curse. Maybe it's let's get Darren Woodson in the Hall of Fame. Let's get something to cheer about. Let's get Ed Tall Jones in the ring of honor at least. Should be in the Hall of Fame. That's disrespectful too. So anyway, I'll see you guys on Sunday. Enjoy your weekend. Have a great one. See ya.